I just talked about mesh and the TPI and how is that uh, a certain number, how that equals so many threads per inch. Now we're going to talk about the rip and how the output and the halftones and how they relate to each other on the, on the mesh. There are a couple things that we set when we're going to our rip and or if we're working in Photoshop or even Photo Painter. Um, first of all is our halftone size or LPI, lines per inch. And really, there's just a few different flavors that we use, like a 65 LPI. That's 65 lines per inch, that, and that ultimately is about as high as we want to go for, say, four color process, traditional type of four color process. We do a lot of 55, and that's for more, uh, we call that spot process. or sim process and then we sometimes will come down to 42 and even lower 32 for more of a graphic halftone approach you know just give that big dot feeling and we get a really nice effect out of that but ultimately the higher the number the finer the dot now there's a few formulas you should use if you're going to use a halftone of 65 you want to use at least four times that in mesh count and they basically apply but I'm going to give you what how we kind of make sense of it ultimately if we're on a 65 line we need to really be on 355s to 380s now we'll sometimes roll into 305s depending on we want to eliminate certain pieces of moire and we might lose some detail on the bottom end so ultimately that's a little bit tougher when we get to 55 lines, we can start at about 230s and work our way up from there. And then 42 and lower, all of these, heck, we can even be down as low as 156s. Now, there's gonna, there has to be some experimenting to kind of dial that in. But that's a good guideline to start. So after we've determined our halftone size, we go to our rip and we set uh, the angle and the dot size, or shape. Now, there's a couple of arguments out there now for somewhere around the 61, 62 degree range and 22.5 degree range. Personally, the two of those are about the only uh, angles that we use anymore. There was an argument years ago, um, and even in traditional four color process, we used to build varying angle, angles to create the rosette. Somewhere along the line, somebody said, well, why in the world do we do that? And the answer is, I don't know, we've always done it that way. So we've kind of determined we don't need to do it that way. We can run things all at the same angle, whether it's four color process, simulated process, spot process, those types of situations. And if you look at a protractor, 22 and a half and 61 are real close to each other on opposite ends of the circle. So ultimately, well, why pick that angle? Well, if this is our mesh, we certainly know that 90 degrees is a bad idea, right? We know that zero degrees is a bad idea because we can line up with our threads. And if our thread is bigger than our dot, we're missing rows of dots, we get a real bad, ugly moire. We also know that 45 degrees is a bad idea, right? I mean, those are pretty common themes. But over a period of time, we've kind of figured out if we do this 61 or 22, we find ourselves in a position where we're kind of almost missing every thread, which means less chance of moire. That makes a lot of sense for us. Now, past the angle is the dot shape. We can go circular, square, diamond, or ellipse. We choose ellipse. Why choose ellipse? Because if we do land on a thread and we're an oval, not a circle, we have a chance of one side or the other side actually washing through. We land on a knuckle, same thing, we've got a chance of that dot still washing through. So these two pieces, these two parts give us the best chance to get the finest detail down to the smallest dot, smallest range, less tonal compression, it works best, hands down.